back to insurance, and I will again uh, defer to our town manager to give us an introduction. Page 78 for all the following. This funds our workers' compensation, our fidelity bond, the public officials' liability coverage, the insurance pool that we belong to, as well as self-insurance. Uh, workers' comp uh, has been increased even with our reduced positions because our experience modification has gone from 0.92 to 1.00. Uh, that that is is a is a much concern. It is something we're addressing uh, with the school department as well as continuing to address within our own department to ensure that we have all of the safety programs that ought to be in place. Uh, you know, 1.00 is, is means you're all right. We want to be better than all right. You know, we would like to get a positive discount, which in essence that would do. Uh, the fidelity coverage, uh, I think, is cost is finally stabilized. Uh, the public officials' liability policy <coughs> provides uh, liability coverage not only for the council and for staff members, but also for all the members of our boards and commissions. Including the school board? Except the school board. They have separate, they're separate school liability. Uh, the MMA insurance pool, uh, as you will note uh, from the letter we received from them, our rates have not increased uh, since 1987-1988. Uh, you, you will note that the amount is down somewhat, and that's because of a, of a more appropriate allocation amongst the town and the school department. Obviously, they are property rich in terms of building. That's uh, why they so they're not covered under it. this. They are covered under this. They are. Yeah, the, the total premium is forty-eight thousand two seventy-four. Oh, okay. So this is just this is just the town portion. Mm -hmm. The self-insurance is we, we have a thousand-dollar deductible on most of our policies, and we pay the deductible out of that account. Michael, you said that under workman's the insurance that. Um, we pay our share and the school pays their share. Would we get a better overall rate if you know, it was all done together? Two it is all done together. Mm -hmm. What was this? Did you mean on the liability? The workman's comp? Work mm -hmm. Right, that's what you were just talking about. Yeah, it is all done together. Mm -hmm. He was just talking about the building. The public officials' liability where the school board was uh, right. separate. That's what you're talking about? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's a. <clears throat> All of the public officials' liability policies specifically exclude schools. Oh, they do. Okay. They do, and they sell separate school policies. The MMA insurance pool to get back to the building. Yeah. <coughs> school buses are included at the school yes. stop. All of, all of our vehicle insurance. Uh, you know, Forty-eight thousand dollars is a pretty good, pretty yes. good deal. Also, the ambulance malpractice, the police professional liability. Some of those of you that've been on the council for a while used to. Probably remember those are all separately budgeted now. They're all paid for directly uh, within that one allowance of just twenty-eight thousand five hundred. When I first came here, I think we were probably spending, you know, over ten years ago, about sixty to sixty-five thousand dollars for the same coverage. The public officials' liability covers <coughs> police and fire, part-time people, and fire, wet team, and rescue. It involves the, it involves the decision making, you know, in, of, of the department. It, it doesn't, for example, rescue is provided under the other policy. The, the, the you know the professional of what they do. Did I make that clear enough? But like errors or omissions type thing is is paid for out of the public officials life. Slander. If they make a slanderous comment, if they, uh, it's more in the decision making as opposed to, yeah. So we have general liability from MMA, and then this is this is a decision making. Any other uh, comments? It's certainly gratifying to see that uh, this year compared to last year, uh, given this financial climate, we can actually look toward a. Uh, minus three percent uh, reduction in total spending based on 1991. Let us proceed to employee benefits. 
Account 0170, page 82. Again, I will ask. McGovern to give us an introduction. The social security rate of increase has not changed. It, 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 there might be a possibility we have to pick up some more of our part-time personnel in Medicare. That's still something we were, we were looking at. On retirement costs, we finally on Thursday received the percentage level of contribution from the Main State Retirement System. Instead of 0 0.2019, it's 0 0.1952 which is a savings of $3,000. Uh, so that's a $3,000, uh, you know, plus that you have. Uh, Can you explain the figures on that? It's, it's $135,500, and then it's $137,000. Okay. And now you're telling me it's added. Do you know what it is right now? Yeah, I added back in when a, when a position was placed back in the budget. Okay. Amount and it's actually within the deferred comp section, so okay. that's what that employee gets. Do you have a figure for that account right now? With a point one nine five two? No. Okay. So it's about thirty two hundred dollars roughly. I, I guess I brought it with me today, but I don't know what I did with it. Too many papers. I can understand that. Any particular comments on the uh, employee benefits? Again, looking toward a 1% uh, increase over last year's spending. Let us proceed on to debt service. Rosemary. Oh, I'm sorry, Rosemary. I, I just wanted to know, Mike, under the uh, health insurance, you assumed a 12% rate adjustment? Yes. Do we know that it's anything different than that? That's on 1192, a, a year from now. Thank you. Yeah, the, the increase on 1191 was 9.9. .9, right. And this is, we're, I have no idea that far. Thank you. They set the rates in December. Okay. Any other comments? <clears throat> Again, page 85, the debt service. Oh, uh, wait, I'm, can I go to 84? I missed something. Sure. On the vacation and sick leave accrual. Can you tell me how much we have in that account? Totally. I'm, I'm very concerned about that being underfunded. It, what we've ended up doing, we have fully funded it every year, but the auditors have done it as an adjusting entry with with monies that have been unexpended from all of the other accounts. So it, it is fully funded with the assumptions that they use. However, you know, it's, we, we aren't fully, we have never fully funded in the budget process the amount of liability that we think we're going to have that particular year. It's always been as a result of generating other surplus funds, we've been able to, to provide the, the transfer into that. You're correct. <coughs> Don't but, we, but instead of funding it through the budget process, we're funded as a almost like a backdoor adjusting entry by the audits. And you know it's we ought to budget it at a higher level than we do with Windows State. Indicate it probably ought to be about ten thousand more than it is. Because if you had ten thousand at one yeah. point, then it was reduced to five thousand, which is what yeah. it's been the past couple of years. Yes. And what I was proposing is that it continue to be chronically underfunded in terms of within the budget. But it, it is done by the auditors at the end of the year. We suffer the consequences of it. I know it's strange. It's not. It's like knowing you, you have an expense and, and not budgeting it. That's exactly what it is, but it's the way it's been now. It's a line item. On the line item, it's under budgeted. Right. But the liability at year end before uh, contribution to surplus, it has been recognized, recognized and funded. corrected. Funded. Thank you. Okay, so we don't have any extra. But if we don't have our little cushions here and there and everywhere, mm -hmm. we're stopped. You're exactly right. Okay. We have to take it out of that. Yeah. Unexpected. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the auditors do that. Mm -hmm. You know, no actions required. Could you get a copy of the town report? I didn't answer Janet's question on how much we have recognized. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, questions or need for clarification on the employee benefits uh, section? 
Let us proceed to the debt service, page 85. On page 86, the tax anticipation note, I'm proposing that we borrow less for one very significant reason, and that is because we, because interest rates being down, we're not getting the arbitrage benefit that we got before. Uh, and that's why that expense is down the amount that it is, is we're proposing to borrow 1.1 million instead of 1.5 million. It also res it, it eases the issue of how do we then invest those funds. Uh, you know, we will have fewer funds to invest. I, I do feel we can carry ourselves through with the five hundred thousand dollars less. The library debt remains the same. Uh, the road improvement bond. Uh, these are you know things that were approved earlier. The portable classroom one on page eighty seven is uh, is for the, the portable classroom. Bond. I'm hopeful that we may be able to get interest rates slightly lower than the amounts in the budget here, but we won't know that until well after the budget is adopted. And uh, we, we just don't know. Uh, you, mean, you, like mean, that it, <coughs> you mean uh, lower than the 6.75 that's indicated here. We'll be, borrowing. we'll be borrowing at a lower rate than that. On the road improvement bond, no. what does that cover? What project? That covered the Broad Cove drainage and the Sawyer Road project. Michael, when is the, the last uh, possible moment <clears throat> that we can exercise that uh, portable classroom the bond situation? I mean, to get to get a better interest rate. We're doing it as one package of bonds. Right. What's the last date that we can sort of uh, use in terms of the interest rates uh, coming down? What would that be? It's uh, like May. From but, uh, again, I'd like to caution, we, we just finished talking a minute ago about something that's underfunded. And if by chance we do a little bit better, you know, I, every time, every year, we, you search me to find more revenues at the end and find this thing and it, it comes back and, and, you know, the door comes slamming back. And I think if you, if you want to, you know, hold that out to the last minute to find out, why don't we also hold out the one where it was going the other way? You know, throughout this whole process, there were a few ups and a few downs. And you know, there were a few with the chief this morning that you know he didn't recognize the the part time, the five percent increase to the crossing guard. And you know, I told him to absorb that. And, you know, I, I would hope that you know we're not talking a whole lot of dollars if we do that much better. And there's going to be a few good things and a few bad things. The uh, Beyond that is the is the uh, note for the 1226 Shore Road at a cost of 11,250, and the public works garage at 22,500. Do you want to put that on the revisit list? Well, I need to well, just I think in general, in terms of possible vehicles that we might be interested in using, and, and obviously it might not be. Uh, a waste of our time to really look at the whole issue of having uh, collateralized uh, and greater insured, you know, the town's funds over the last six months since the uh, financial climate has changed uh, so dramatically. But that's a different in issue. No, I, under bond. I understand yeah. that. I understand that. But in general, uh, in terms of the whole interest uh, phenomenon, yes. So that's debt service. Okay. Just, to, just a minute. <clears throat> on this public works improvements in 1226, these figure for a year. Yes. For the fiscal year. year. Okay. Which is just interest. Just interest. Yes. Okay. We. Are your other roll here, please. I'm sorry. Uh, could Michael just? Um, let me know how are we in terms of debt service to what it would be a generally accepted or generally um, recognized uh, prudent level for towns our size. Well, the state sends a sets a maximum that we're way 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 below with you know, like five percent of whatever the total is. I'd say generally below we have absolutely no school debt other than the the most recent was five hundred thousand. That's relatively small. Uh, for the most part, below. But very few communities meet that state. No one, no, no one gets anywhere. It's like 15 or 
percent or something. No, it's just crazy. People stay around three percent. The vacation accrued liability is uh, two hundred and sixteen thousand dollars. Vacation sick leave. Question: Janet. Thank you. Minutes, so. See, you look at that. That automatically increases every year though, by the amount that you increase salaries by. So that automatically increase needs to increase by five percent. You take five percent of two hundred thousand, and that's uh, ten thousand dollars right there. That's right, and that's my point of <coughs> Janet's point as well. Other comments. Oh, it all earns interest, yeah. But the interest goes to the general fund revenue. It isn't applied back to that individual account. It doesn't just go up into the account. No. In fact, I even looked once, you know, maybe setting up some plan to do away with the liability since it was increasing by X amount each year. But then I looked at it, and we I don't think we've ever had a time when we're not getting interest rates that, that are really paying for that increasing liability indirectly. So really, it's not costing us anything, any additional each year, as long as that money is invested. Okay, I believe we have already completed 240, public protection. Let us move to contributions, uh, count 520, page 197. These accounts uh, include a contribution of $250 to the Cape Preservation Society, $8,000 for Family Fund Day, that's a reduction of $5,000. I've suggested to the committee that they may want, and this is not for this coming Family Fund Day, but for the one that would be in 1992. I've suggested that particularly that they may want to look at charging folks a buck or two for parking as a way if they want to keep up the same level of programming and everything else as a way of funding it. Uh, cable TV programming uh, is at $12,000 that would continue to allow the funding of uh, all of the programming that's, that's now funded. Uh, as you can see from the request from William Bates, uh, it does not provide uh, for anything but minor equipment, tapes, and maintenance and personnel costs. It, it, uh, it's not include equipment. Uh, the Main Development Foundation contribution kept at the level of 200. Uh, the Convention and Visitors Bureau was at 1,000. Uh, so the council knows that at times I've questioned why we do some of these things. And I did keep it at 500, recognizing that uh, you know, this is one of the things that is still helping out our economy and uh, perhaps ought, ought to be promoted. That's up to the council. And also kept the 500 dollar contribution to the Museum of Rot. And that primarily enables all sorts of our students to uh, go to uh, the museum. Uh, last year, we had over 550 students and teachers visited the museum and took advantage of those of our tools. Comments on the contributions section? On the cable TV, is there? It doesn't appear that there is money uh, included in this budget for uh, programming of workshops for the for the council and school board for next year's budget. For example. <laughs> Uh, there's a little bit. Generally, the council only meets 12 times a year. The 12 council meetings. Yeah. Got, you've got yeah, 16 and then there council are four, four other programs. We usually do at least a couple. You mean as special uh, meetings? Special televised meetings. Mm -hmm. What have we done this past year? Just the school board, town council mm -hmm. yeah. Before, before the meetings, before the budget. But in this fiscal year, what have we done outside? Yes, what we're doing this. That's one. We did the special. Yeah, but there's going to be several uh, school board workshops. All the school board um, workshops are being done as well. Five of those. 
We do have 12 other programs budgeted here. Uh, CAPE issues, we have budgeted 12. I think they probably only end up doing about 10 a year. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a little bit of flexibility. Do you feel there's not enough there, Jane? Oh, I just don't want us to use that as an excuse not to broadcast things we should be broadcasting. I'm saying that we didn't budget for it. Do we want to revisit that and be more specific in terms of projecting uh, the numbers? Uh, do we need a little more clarification on that account? Well, we've never, <coughs> we've never not uh, televised any, any uh, meeting that we thought was important enough to do it. And as the manager has put in, he's got a couple extra up here as far as accounts of those, and he's got a couple down there as far as the issue. An issue, I would think it would, to me, it'd be adequate. I don't think that I would sit there and say that we haven't got it budgeted if it was important enough of a meeting. We need to find the money for it, Michael, on these other programs. Yeah. Are those programs when we run it? Tapes from sporting events. Is no, that considered no. other? Those no. are live presentations. No. We're talking about. Yeah, that might be if uh, the candidates' night of the League of, League of Women Voters is, is another is another program. If we ask to, if the council asked to telecast the border orientation session, uh, that would be another example. But no, the games, that's not. Okay, I just want to clarify. No. It's only when we say, Lillian, can you get a crew here to, that the council wants this telecast. Or, or Lillian will come to me and say, is this, I've been asked to do so and so, such and such. Will this be a, a paid broadcast? Will we pay the camera folks? And uh, most of the times I say yes, uh, because you know that it is something of a general community interest. And, uh, Memorial Day Parade is a volunteer. That's not a team. Usually, it's the meetings and the, the that type of thing is is what we pay for. We don't pay for for games for uh, family fun day if someone goes down there and tapes. What about the school programs? Those are done by volunteers. I would like to ask if this could be please put on the list. I know it's small, but I would like to see $500 go into that for taking of workshops and special meetings of both school and, and town council. Uh, just a, a couple of examples of meetings. There were um, three emergency meetings of the school board, and uh, one of them was a special, and it was televised. And we had a special meeting that wasn't televised in August. And we had, um, there was a special meeting the 24th-ish of May on the budget where the people came back. So I just think for $500, if we had it there, it would be, as uh, Councilor Amos said, it wouldn't be any excuse that we didn't have the money. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, we've made the major investment of getting all this equipment and all, and this is just providing for use of that equipment and to make the best use of it as we can for a very small, a very small investment at this point. So I, I, I'd like to make sure that we have enough to have to do it. all that we can, encouraging the use of the cable TV. I, I agree with that. I mean, I agree with what Jane has said. We got the equipment and everything, but I just felt the way the manager explained it that we did have enough. Now, I don't think we'll, I hope we don't have a, uh, deal again this year like we did last year and have those special meetings that need to be uh, televised and I think they should be televised when you've got an issue like that but I think it's going to be a better year than last year <clears throat> in this way I look at it but I think I'm not even over $500 if the people feel that there isn't enough money in here to do these special Well let's put it on our revisiting list and uh who knows there seem to be differences of opinion. We, we obviously want to televise, uh, you know, important uh, meetings for the citizens. Uh, let's revisit that one. Other? I'm curious to know what, if any, response we've had from the Family Fund Day Committee about their budget proposal. 
your budget proposal for that? The only ones I've discussed it with are Jan Love and Karen Dunphy, who are the two co chairmen And the reaction I got was, was, I would say, very accepting and very understanding. Uh, they recognize that for a one-day activity, $13,000 is an awful, has been an awful lot to invest, and uh, they do, they did think that they could live within the $8,000, particularly, uh, you know, looking along with the one suggestion that, that I had, of, and maybe people going to the fireworks at night, they might be willing to pay two bucks per car. Uh, Speaking of the fireworks, I don't see those budgeted. This. Uh, mm -hmm. This was a memo I sent them. If you look at the next paragraph down, the fireworks have been funded with last year's remaining in countdown. That's for this. That's for this. That's for this. Yeah, this, this, is the, this is the budget for fiscal year 1991. Okay. The 8,000 mm -hmm. for next year is in no way divided out. Okay. So five. You, we're telling the family fund day committee in essence that you have eight thousand dollars. Then they'll come back with as soon as some of the other things are worked out with the specifics of how much you know I work and how much for entertainment and how much for the other things. This is the budget for, for 1991. Okay. This, this sheet shows that. This, uh, which, which you're looking at for the budget request actually is for 1992. The budget request for 1992 is 8,000. In the past we've allocated 3,500. That's what, how it's been allocated is 3,500 for fireworks if you take that out of the 8,000. There's not much left. We also were complaining about how the expenses for this event were expanding year after year, too. So. Yeah. There's other things we can look at during the day, have less public works personnel there, try to get volunteers, help with parking. It's, you know, when you're trying to reduce the budget, it's the broken record again by 8%, you know, we've got to look for different ways of doing things, particularly on a on an event like this where there's possibilities for generating revenue and for generating volunteerism. That's a huge cut though. That's that's not eight percent. No, but when you when you have a, a budget with so much in, Yeah, when you have a budget with all the fixed costs that this has, you know, public works was cut twenty six percent. It's it, it's you can't have it even because you know, I'm not saying it should be even, but I mean that is a huge cut in that it is. budget. That's become a really special day in this community, and I hate to see us pull a rug out from under it. You can't get this in entertainment. I mean, that if you don't have good entertainment at that family fun day, I think the whole thing will kind of break down because it's the music and the, you know, the jugglers and all that they've got that keep it, keep it moving, moving keep and it exciting. Oh. That's something that adds to the quality of life in this town for a lot of people, this family fun day. And I would request that we put this on the list. What if uh, now if we're going to revisit it again? Family Fun Day is on the list. We'll revisit the budget now. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, in all, all seriousness, this isn't bad at all. <laughs> at this point, at this point, uh, in all honesty, it seemed worse. Used to be though, everything you're going to revisit it was to cut it. Now you're revisiting. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very, that's right. It's very I suspect Not some me. some of these may come to the four three vote that has happened that's in the right. past too, and that's just the way we'll do it. Uh, any other comments with respect to the contributions account? Let us move to human services account four one zero. Page 164. Uh, this provides for a total of $41,105 for a number of human service agencies. Uh, it's for helping out needy folks in the community. It's a, it's a total increase of 6%. Uh, the one major increase is for the Handicap Leisure Center. Unfortunately, they put the names in the books of who's going to benefit from that. In the, yeah, and those names should really shouldn't have appeared there. So, I would ask you all to use discretion uh, in that. But anyway, uh, that the handicap leisure center always looks at 
it ought to go up, every, up and down every year, depending on how many capitals of the students are there. More, more of a contractual than a contribution. And that's why that one is up so much. Beyond that, uh, there are on the senior citizen transportation is down somewhat, but that's, to re that's no change in the program. That's merely reflected an estimate, in, in a different estimated cost. You'll notice this year we spent $2,603 for it. So, you know, we would just, we don't need the 3500 I can go into any more detail if you wish. I think just one thing to keep in mind, um, I think given the nature of the, you know, the financial climate, I think all of the um, increases over last year are really very generous. I think the other thing we need to keep in mind is that we really are funding all of these agencies twice in that the $11,000 increase over last year to the Cumberland County budget also has almost to the agency, the, the exact same agencies that we are again giving another 3.26% to of our Cumberland County allotment. So um, actually all of these numbers are a little bit more and the agencies do receive that funding really from two sources that we uh, underwrite. So for an overall, you know, 6% uh, increase in the account in general, I think is a very generous contribution. What's, that, what's the difference between the Southern Maine Senior Citizens and the Senior Citizen Transportation? Mm -hmm. I see the Southern Maine one goes up a couple hundred dollars, and the other one's reduced. The Southern Maine Senior Citizens is, a, is an outside agency that provides Meals on Wheels to elderly uh, folks. It uh, provides helping people with the CERC break for applications. It's an assistance re and referral agency for senior citizens. The senior citizen transportation is an amount that we give to the people of the school department for a, a bus service that is run on Tuesdays and Fridays. And under state law, uh, and under the funding formula, they're not allowed to use those school buses uh, at school expense for private purposes. And this is a, is a private purpose, so we do pay them for that service. And they calculated the cost this year at 2603 for that. I'm curious about when some of the funds are expended for a number of these, which doesn't show anything yet expended in this fiscal year. No. One, two, three, four, so is that that traditionally comes up later, before the end of June issue? A lot of them send us bills. And if they send us a bill, we usually pay it. Uh, otherwise, because they are contributions, otherwise we look at it, and if it, as I look at the budget reports, well, I'll just put a check request in and I'll send it to them. We haven't actually received a bill. Uh, the uh, community health service is billed every month, which is the largest one there by mm -hmm. far. Community counseling is paid twice a year. Dental for the needy is, is uh, I'll usually get a call from a school social worker saying uh, this particular student has some problem, uh, there's no money to address it, do you have the funds available? And you know, if the social worker's cleared it, I, you know, as long as the money's there, I always say yes. The money's always been sufficient. Uh, leisure centers once a year, Ingraham's once a year. The rest of them are, uh, I believe, all once a year. So Southern Coastal Family planning. planning hasn't sent us a bill yet. Uh, day one hasn't sent us a bill yet. Hospice of Maine. There's also Southern Coastal Family Planning is having merger talks with another agency, from what I've been able to get through the grapevine. And you know, if in fact that happens, I would think that before those funds are expended, you would want to approve those funds go into that new and different agency. Then I've got, a, I guess, a proposal for the Leisure Center for the Handicap. They do say that they would consider an in-kind donation of swimming pool time as partial payment. Mm -hmm. I think that's something we should strongly pursue and perhaps get it down to a point where we can really visit. Um, I would say we could possibly consider a contribution of 1600 and have the rest be made up in the pool. So I, I don't know how much pool time they're looking at, but I think that's something that we should pursue. Sure. The, the problem is they tend to want the same pool time that Don Richards also wants for the different activities. But you know, I can speak with uh, 
superintendent of schools and then speak to so whether we can speak to Don Richardson up and down and see if there's any I the, according to their letter we have um, used 124 units of service through December of 90 yeah. at $18 an hour that's just a little over $2,000 not sure why why are they requesting so much more than that than they get it, of because of those the number of students they now have they were very they upset a year than... ago and sent a very threatening letter when they ended up having more students and just expected us to to send them the money and uh, we didn't but in the past you sometimes cut this yeah, well, my... before it comes to my concern with this particular agency is I think they send us a bill saying this is the cost for these students. And I think the point Wayne just brought out, they're also funded by the county, they're also funded by the United Way. They're looking for us to absorb the total cost of these students at the same time when they're also indirectly getting funding assistance right. from other sources. And I don't think that we should do it that way. Right. I did not cut any of the human service requests this particular year because primarily because of the poor economic times. I thought it was sending out the wrong messages if we came in with a budget, you know, not providing for the most needy people during the, the most needy time. Well, I Makes thought we sense. are if we reduce it to more of what the actual is. But mm -hmm. that's, oh, that's the only one that has come in with a big request. Yep. The others are either holding a line or reducing right. or, right, you know, being very careful about it. So I, I think the combination of offering some full-time, if these are, in fact, all students that use this service, no, no, no. Michael keeps referring to them. I would call them clients. I would call them students. Ages just to two to senior citizen ages. I don't know the three people. Letter. Because I'm I know sure of one of the names on there. Of course, it's not state, but I don't know. That we must have some pull time available during the day. It's so whole session. That pull time. Or a particular day. Yeah. Mm. Well, let me find that out more about it and revisit it somewhere. That would be better. But that, that sounds like a good idea. We'll, we'll revisit the uh, Leisure Center for the Handicapped, specifically look at that issue of exchanging uh, pool time for uh, assessment uh, hourly uh, work. <coughs> Are there any other comments with respect to human services? Or one zero? Really? I think this is the managers of the, all the communities ought to get together. This is one thing that we discussed at the county budget year. It's time that one, the funds come from one agency one way or the other. I mean, one source of revenue, as you might say. Like either all county and not have the communities do it. That, that is very much a policy issue as opposed to a, the managers. And I would think, you know, we've had that discussion before and the human service funding network uh, is is uh, I put this politely. Yeah, there was a. I served on a committee a year or so ago with some elected officials and others. And there's a strong, strong resistance to change because it, it's a lot like what happened in the federal program, the block grants. Suddenly, you put it with one agency and you have a block grant, and then the block grant is reduced. As much as as much as it's pain for them to go to all the different funding sources, they don't want to keep all their eggs in one basket. Or two so they're, they're very resistant. I think for the, the man, when I'm in response to your question, Billy, I think for the managers to get together and do it would be, you know, we're not the ones that are ultimately going to be involved in decisions. It's got to really come from the policy level. Other uh, thoughts on human services at this point? Let us move to page 187, uh, account 420 general. Assistance, which has jumped up a whopping 33% over last year's expenditure. Mr. Manager. Yeah, it's uh, last year we expended almost $16,000. This year budgeted is $15,000. As of yesterday, we spent $16,044. Uh, over 106% of this year's budget when the fiscal year was only 66% over. The $20,000 is, is reflective of a continuation of that same level of spending. There's two cases we have now that are currently quite expensive. We've also recently uh, taken on an additional family as, cli as clients who will be a long-term uh, 
need. So I, I'm, I'm worried that the 20,000 is insufficient. Uh, but uh, we'll see. Even though it is a 33% increase in the budget. Well, this obviously is a consequence of the state's uh, situation too, with AFDC cutbacks and WIC uh, cutbacks, and the entire uh, DHS department having uh, suffered tremendously in the context of this budget difficulty. So the, the charges are obviously being passed to the um, local municipality. Well, it also has to do with unemployment. Mm -hmm. Yes. And mm -hmm. loss of jobs. But as I look at the, the three most expensive clients here, none of them relate to any of those factors that you happen to be talking about. Sorry. Although that, I'm afraid once those begin to kick in, we may be even worse. The, the three clients that are causing the greatest pressure in this account uh, are causing it for other reasons. Isn't it on the point? No. Oh, okay. Then we may be really good. We may be. Existing. What is the, just remind me, please, what's the state assistance? They fund 50% of this. That's listed under revenues in the right. miscellaneous state revenues. Is that on a monthly basis? It's supposed to be. The state reimburses us when they're good and ready to reimburse us. And that's Usually it's about a four, right now it's running at about a four month delay after we send the bill. And that's Still, something's. Do you foresee <coughs> that going less than fifty percent on the state side? Anything's possible. But. Anything's possible, but I I don't foresee it. And the, the budget does not contemplate. Are you legislative policy committee members. I was going to say, yeah, the uh, MMA brought that up, and they're they're shooting to try to get one hundred percent funding from the state. <laughs> There's a hearing on a bill this week <laughs> that would require <laughs> that would have the state do this so that the client could have one-stop shopping well, in essence well, and uh, at the state, at the state yeah, yeah. level with you know outreach yeah. that yeah. probably won't go anywhere that's ludicrous actually it, it's ludicrous right now that people run go to the state the state says you have to wait a month to get a check go to your town office mm -hmm. You know, the people are getting the runaround, and, you know, the, the state ought to just be there and meet the people's needs rather than, you know, having cab fare to go six different places. And not, I don't mean to, they don't come to Cape Elizabeth with cabs, but... Uh, oh, they don't? No. Oh. Well, once or twice, but, uh, but, you know, you see it in, if you ever look at the human services on Forest Avenue there, uh, you know. They do a good business, then. Well, well, they do, but that's the only way those people, you know, a lot of those people get around. It'd be nice if they didn't have to go to five or six places. But I can't believe the state is going to be able to do the follow-up and the initial investigation and processing, which you can do at the local level. Somewhat, but there's other things they can provide that we can't in terms of a lot, you know, 495 pounds across the state of Maine, not everyone in those offices can really keep up on all the different services, other services that are available to clients. Uh, no, nor make good, informed legal decisions. You, know, you have an awful lot of these towns. We've got you know the three-member board, you know one of whom is charged with doing this. And with everything else they have to do in those towns, they really can't keep up on it. So you know, Cape Elizabeth Barbara Ray does it and does a fine job of it, but uh, it's really tough in a lot of these small towns. But isn't general assistance supposed to be a temporary thing until people? Are able to kick into some of these other. It once was. Yeah. It's not anymore. No. 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 Yeah. Well, Whatever what? unmet need there is, we're supposed to fund, provided that the expenses are kept within certain limits. For, forever. I mean, until forever. that need. Yeah. Well, one of the one of That's the right. clients we've just taken on is is a uh, elderly couple who have run out of funding, mm -hmm. and we're, we're working with uh, Barbara's working with. Uh, a social worker who, through Prop, uh, that's helped help fund by the money we give them, and you know we're trying to see what other things are available to help out this couple. But you know they ran across tough times. And, you know, it, those things happen. Well, the other provision in that law says is if there's a substantial change in the 
financial condition of the recipients of those benefits, so that those benefits will be repaid to the town. Is that not correct? That's correct. So some of these situations that are temporary, and the town is causing them to get from point A to point B, could in fact be put back for future use by other participants. The state law is that everything needs to be paid back when people are, are in a position to do it. Uh, Has anyone ever paid money back? We have received small amounts back at different times. But I just want to make one comment. I'm not in favor of changing the recommendation here because I think it could get worse. As women comp checks run out, they're going to have to go somewhere to get something. Well, I think it's a problem. But this will we even cover. I know. I know. I think it could be overdrawn. Something yeah. don't happen here within the next year. True. Are you recommending we revisit this and perhaps with consideration of making an addition to it, or just leaving it as it is? Am I, I, I would be in favor of leaving it alone because you don't really know what's going to happen in the economy. If we, if we get an onslaught, we we'll have to come back and find some money somewhere. So take okay. that. It's the way I would look at it. I, I do too. Huh? I do too. That's all I think when we hold our breath on. That's right. right. Seems to be a general consensus rather than revisiting it. We'll leave it as is. Okay, perhaps let us uh, move to revenues. But I might suggest there are some people here waiting for a couple other items. Maybe we can do revenues and sure. salary issues at, at the end of when we do those other accounts. All right, let's move to the uh, salary issues. We can no. do it. Uh, we'll skip it Did you want to skip that? We'll skip that. Let's revisit it. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, yeah. So, we want to start with the assessor then? Yeah, one, yeah that'd be great. Mr. Daigle, please join us at the uh, head of the table. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Page 54. This is one of those accounts that was on the errata sheet um, in terms of the, uh, the way the travel reimbursement was being handled. And it was erroneous, first of all, it was erroneously placed in the, the full-time payroll account where it shouldn't have been to begin with. So, Propose that we take the 2000 out of that and that we, we, we reinstate essentially at the same level that had been provided before back in the uh, in the uh, 2006 account for travel account. And that, that is on that list that eventually nets out of the cost of uh, $1,600 with the other changes. Other than that, uh, Jerry can explain. All of the major things that are in this budget. Ready? Okay. Please. Fine. Uh, first item would be the uh, payroll uh, 1001, which, uh, as you can see, has a 5% salary adjustment for uh, all three positions. Uh, I don't know if we're taking these one at a time or if you want me to go through the whole. I should just continue through and let's say okay, right fine. You want to make additional comments. All right. In uh, account 1002's part-time payroll, uh, this account covers the uh, uh, summer vacation for the clerk secretary uh, during uh, peak times, which happens to be uh, summer. Uh, it, we're talking uh, this year uh, covering 10 days as opposed to the uh, previous year. Uh, that is a reduction in the budget for that particular line. Uh, where we had requested uh, uh, $1,120, we're down to $900. Rosemary, you look per perplexed. I just, I just want to know if those 10 days are 8-hour days. Uh, yes, they would be. And the price is $90 a day yes, for eight hours? Yes. We would be dealing with a uh, temporary, temporary, temporary service, yes. Contracting help. I know. I, <laughs> an additional 25%. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, line uh, 2004 is printing and advertising. Uh, uh, this account uh, would cover the cost of printing uh, the forms that we have to have for assessing purposes. It also cover the cost of uh, uh, other uh, forms that we would need for the building inspector. Um, this also covers the uh, mis miscellaneous maps that we may have to print that uh, are for the town or for the uh, zoning. There's a legal ad that has to go in once a year and that's also included here at $275. Uh, this uh, budget uh, request is for uh, <coughs> $4,500. That was, the, that was the change. Well, that was the, the recent change that we switched around. I bet it's $1,000. The printing and advertising is $1,000. Just $1,000. $1,000. Oops, sorry. Yeah, you're right. Uh, wrong account. $1,000. It was last year $4,800. Uh, the reason for that I tried to explain in the... Uh, in the narrative portion where we had uh, set aside funds for the printing of uh, new assessing record cards and also for the uh, trying to get the process of uh, running the building permits through the computer and those forms we've already purchased. We will not, that's a one-time cost. Line uh, 2006 uh, this is the one where there was a change in the travel, and I believe that's the one that should have been the 4500 I think I marked up the wrong one. That's 4000 for the two allowances and 500 for miscellaneous travel beyond uh, Augusta and outside the state of Michigan. Okay, account number 2007 is the dues and membership. Uh, we belong to, I say we collectively, uh, myself and Ernie, uh, belong to uh, professional uh, organizations. Uh, there is one here that is not uh, particular to any, any one individual, that's the Boca Building Code. We pay $120 to, to subscribe to the uh, Building Officials Conference of America, which is our building code. The other memberships are broken down, as you see here on the uh, on the list. Uh, What's NARA? NARA. NARA is the National <coughs> Excuse me National Association of Review Appraisers. MMAO is Ma uh, Maine Association of Assessing Officers, and IAO is the International Association of Assessing Officers. MBOIA is the Maine Building Officials and Inspectors Association. We are affiliated uh, uh, with all of those. We are also affiliated with the Maine Municipal Association, but we don't pay the dues to this department. Jerry, you have just been uh, uh, elected to the presidency of one of these groups? Uh, believe it or not, uh, the group that I was just elected president to is not on this list. Uh, it's uh, a little embarrassing, I guess, I must say. Uh, um, it's the uh, Northeast Regional Association of Assessing Officers. It's a $10 due per year. It's very possible that I uh, left it off the list. Our congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> despite, despite that it's not $10 one, will be revisited. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, it's embarrassing not to have that organization, but uh, <clears throat> yes, I may have run a lot of room on the uh, on that particular listing of those uh, memberships also. Uh, <laughs> Give us many lines. Line uh, 2009, uh, conferences and meetings. Uh, here we have taken a substantial hit. Uh, uh, yours truly will not be able to attend the uh, conference in Phoenix, Arizona because it has been zeroed out. But uh, we discussed that. Uh, Mike and I have discussed that. And it's. Uh, let, me, let me relate that discussion. Uh, okay. What I told Jerry that if within the other $500 allocations below here, he wants, he chooses to use any of that to go to Phoenix, that we would, as long as this account was not exceeded, he could do that, but that the cap of it was 2000 including for Ernie's and Sandra's computer training and all that, but that anything beyond the 500 for Phoenix, if he chose to go, 
would be his responsibility. Right. What do you foresee the cost of that trip to? Oh, Arizona is, is not inexpensive, although uh, it's hard to plan what the, what the cost will be. But I think 1500 would be a minimum, I would, I would venture a guess, by the time you get the uh, conference uh, registration, registration fees, et cetera, yes. I should point out that the $500 uh, breakdown that we're talking below would be for, I uh, uh, have to remember that the code officer does have uh, uh, seminars, courses, and uh, training he would like to attend, and we, uh, you know, we promote that. Uh, Sandra, the secretary, also um, attends from time to time the uh, assessing courses and uh, annually uh, participates in computer courses for advancement. And that has really come to fruition now that we've uh, standardized, we're planning to standardize, all permits will be run through a computer program where we'll be using blank sheets of paper. It will eliminate down the line an awful lot of purchasing of separate forms. Uh, and the, not only that, but it'll, it'll also computerize the, the application fee and the dates of inspection. It's, it's, it's come to uh, well worth the, the, uh, the investment we've made. I'd like to continue that. Jerry, I'm curious, are any of the courses especially for CEO, state-mandated? Uh, Isn't there something about Yes, there will be. There will be. CEOs? Yes, that is on the, in fact, it was, uh, it went through the uh, session last year, and that's, that is mandated. The assessing, excuse me, assessing has been mandated since the 70s. And now the code officer will be one, another uh, full-time person that will have to be uh, trained and expenses uh, met for that certification. Um, the, what I see as being difficult for me in this category is conferences, meetings, and training are grouped in the same line item, and I don't see training as conferences or meetings. Mm -hmm. We, I, with the exception of the police department, I think we do that in all our different accounts. You know, we see conferences as training opportunities. I, we, I do believe conferences we are training yeah. opportunities, but yeah. I do not believe that training is a conference opportunity. I don't see them as the same. But so training then is a learning or expanding experience. I mean, a course at USM is not a conference. That's true. But well, we fund them all out of all the 2009 accounts. Okay. With the one exception of the police department, which I think the, the, I think it's different because we, they will separate the administrative conference and meetings from everything else. And there's more. Well, Jerry, has there been a kind of rotation for you going to these IAL annual meetings like every other year? Uh, have no. You, have you had a schedule on which you attend that kind of meeting? And if I, not, when was the last one you attended? I guess I've been fortunate. The town has uh, allowed me in recent past to, to attend uh, every year. Jerry was on the, the national board of directors, international board of directors of this association. You know, I wasn't going to have an officer of the international organization not not be funded by his community, so I did recommend in each previous year's budget that he be able to attend that so His services on the board is off, but you know, obviously once you've been on the international board, uh, you'd like to continue to attend the conference to, to see your, the people that you've begun to establish, you know, long friendships and relationships with and to gain, you know, from the knowledge of, of those, gain the benefits of the that the knowledge you get from those individuals. I would like us to be able to revisit this and potentially see if we could add, say, $500 and then expect you to find the other 1000 to be able to attend that conference. We've already done that, is my point, Janet. Yeah. That, that's what actually that bottom line is. Well, I'm saying, though, if we add, if we say 500 make it $2,500 instead of 2000 he's got more of a chance of getting it because I don't think we should undercut training and conferences for the other members of that department. Well, uh, <clears throat> that brings up another issue, though. Over all departments, there ought to be some consistency uh, in the availability of people to be able to attend conferences. And, you know, as Jerry has just said, the town has been very generous about his being able to go to all of these conferences. Some of our other departments, uh, we haven't been maybe as generous. Uh, and I think we've got to be careful about that. Mm -hmm. The other issue, some some just don't get as interested in going, but True. for the most part, 
I think everyone has found them to be very rewarding experiences. Once again. And it'd be great to fund them all once again. No, but we ought to have some policy on what we're going to do during these tough times. Either not fund them, or fund them every other year, or, or fund p a portion of them. I just uh, to follow up on that, I belong to many organizations where we fund a flat dollar amount period per department, and everyone else uh, pays the difference and makes the choice based on that money whether or not they want to go. So, I mean, there are ways to do it other than yes or no. And do these alternate East Coast, West Coast? They they move across the country. Uh, it'll be St. Louis, Missouri next year. They do get close. So. <laughs> But never Portland. Never Portland. <laughs> Except the one that I'm president of. Oh, the ten That one is coming to Portland <laughs> in 92. <laughs> a big deal. Well done. Well, yeah. oh, I, I get my $10 back. <laughs> I did owe one, James. What is the general consensus of the council about revisiting? I don't know. Uh, any fours? Sounds most against. Did you object to the $500 that I've kind of said is in here if Terry wants to use it? I don't object to that. I don't. Okay. I just don't want to it doesn't sound like there's enough momentum to revisit it. I want the board to know that I, I have no problem with that. I, I think the, the idea of a standard approach uh, to this particular item would make me feel comfortable with my fellow department heads. Mm -hmm. I have no problem with that. They may not feel as comfortable because some of them were every other year, whereas you know, you always got it. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. You're starting out at a higher comfort level there. Uh, yeah, I understand that. And then, yes, I know. You could also feel comfortable being uncomfortable. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Next item. Yes, please. Professional services. Professional services. Uh, this account is uh, about the same budget level only because it carries uh, an awful lot of miscellaneous items. Tax map maintenance is in there which has to be done every year. Uh, division of land, items like that. Upgrading of maps, we've gone a long way in the past year uh, to make the maps uh, of those new subdivisions that are in the rural areas become a map of their own at a scale that's much easier to read. Uh, one, e one inch equals 500 is a very tough scale we have those reduced to uh, increase to one inch equals 100. They're much easier for people to read. Uh, copies of deeds, uh, we still have to pay the registry for those deeds, although they have slowed down and we're not spending as much. Uh, the cost is there and it runs about 700 to 1,000 a year. Pricing guides, uh, those are to upgrade our guides that we use for, uh, for assessing purposes. Uh, code books, again, we have to uh, purchase those uh, er to, to upgrade them. Uh, software is in here to uh, every now and then there is some particular software that's out there that might not be very expensive that can do an awful lot for us. Uh, Polaroid film and state licensing. Uh, it's the first uh, time that's in there but uh, the feds on July 1st 1991 are going to make it mandatory for appraisers in the country or in Maine it should now because the law is passed in the legislature. Appraisers in Maine are going to have to be licensed <coughs> by the state of Maine. And <coughs> the banks are going to require that anybody who does a appraisal be appra uh, licensed by the state of Maine. So it's a federal mandate. The reason uh, assessors are looking towards this is because we would like to be at least on the same par level as the appraisers when they come in to contest our assessments and they go before a board review or a state board. It seems to me that Cape Elizabeth would want to have the person uh, defending the, the assessments of the town to at least be on the par level with an appraisal. That's the reason it's in it. Item uh, 2034 is office equipment. Uh, there is no antici anticipated uh, purchases of any new equipment. Uh, this, uh, this account of $1,000 is uh, the cost of uh, doing business over a year's time with uh, papers and uh, pencils, erasers, and uh, these kinds of things. Supplies, basically. Last but not least, which is outlay, 2034 is zero. Uh, the 4,000 that we received last year was well spent. Again, we were gearing up last year to do business uh, on a computerized level with the uh, building permits. 
three of our stations, all of our employees, all three employees now have a PC and uh, everyone has the capability of doing an awful lot of uh, in, in the uh, in the area of computerizing that data. It's, it's gone to the point where the code officer now uh, uh, puts things in like uh, his daily mileage. Uh, it goes to the, even to the extent of uh, his putting down his daily inspections. Certain routine items that we used to keep on, on file are now being uh, computerized. And it's, I think on the long run it will be something that we are glad that we got into. And I'll be glad to answer the questions you have on the uh, Beyond that, I think, I'm not sure if the goals got attached to that copy. There are the, the assessing goals, revaluation program goals, and the code enforcement goals. Jane. Um, on the revaluation, from your, your introductory letter, you talked about the fact that we are going to delay our revaluation program for yes. year because of the uh, instability in the markets. Um, how does how does this affect people whose homes are have really drastically dropped in value if we delay again for another year of revaluation? Uh, first of all, I don't think we have uh, we have the kind of information that tells us we've had some that have been drastically reduced. I mean, we don't know which ones have been reduced because the only thing we are watching are the, are the sales. We catalog the sales on a monthly basis. So only from the sales do we know which ones are selling for X number of dollars. Do we have houses selling for less than that presently value there? Yes, we do. And that is becoming a problem. And my way of handling that is to tell everyone who finds himself in that predicament to, number one, bring it to our attention, bring it to my attention. Uh, when they do come in and say, this is, this is what's happening, uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's 5%, sometimes it's 10%, uh, and other times it's 20% from, from, the, from the assessment. At that time, we will ask, at least give us the information you have that, that arrived at the value you're talking about, and we'll ask for an appraisal, uh, the, the copy that they had done, by the way, not a, not a separate one. We will review that appraisal, and if we find that we are not within acceptable range of practicality, which is 10 percent, by the way, uh, then uh, there's a chance that uh, the property may have been overassessed. But we can't do it overall. Although I, I think, if you recall, at one time we did a, uh, a session here where I was trying to explain to the council that certain areas of town are not acting the same. As, as, they, as you would imagine they would, even though it's a small town. And that is still occurring. The thing that I have found, though, is that the slowing down seems to be overall. Uh, there are certain properties that are suffering a little more than others, but overall, if I were to say it was a 5% uh, lag, it seems to be on all. There are some suffering a little more than that. So my answer to that is, if there are some that feel they are hurt by the market, they need to come in and not only say it, but demonstrate that it is happening. I'm afraid that's at the time when property is being sold, or if the property was appraised for any reason. We, we have, by the way, indirectly budgeted some funds for reductions in valuation to Jared for Jared to do an individualized basis. That shows up in the fact that uh, we're maintaining the same level of overall town valuation in computing the tax rate as we had last year. And even though we've had a little bit of construction, a little bit of growth, the assumption is that the funds that we're going to get from the taxation for the little bit of construction uh, will go towards paying for the abatements that we'll need to make for those that, that are seeing some reductions. Does it look like, Jerry, that for fiscal year, uh, 93 a revaluation will need to take place yes uh, the interesting thing that's happening to us uh, Cape Elizabeth uh, is that normally our ratio decreases and we always worry about blotting, falling below the 70 percent in our case over the past 12 months our ratio has been increasing 
which means uh, that our uh, quick slide to 70% is not there. What also means that the town is that 5% that sluggish level is there. Uh, even though we are at 83%, 85%, possibly moving up to 87%, I'm not sure. It, it, the question comes in, how, when do you really need a revaluation? Uh, normally you need a revaluation when it has not been done for a long period of time. You need a revaluation because you're below 70%, or well, you need a revaluation because you feel some of your assessments are unequalized. Uh, I still say that we ought to plan to do one in uh, fiscal 93, for whatever reason, only because the last one we did was 87. One of, Jerry and I have spent a lot of time discussing this, and one point I really want to make clear is that in what Jerry's been looking at, as long as everyone is coming down by about the same amount, we're all, we're all right in, in terms of fairness. It's when he has these properties that obviously are out of whack are the ones that he needs to address. Interestingly enough, when it was going the other way, no one was in looking <laughs> for, for, you know, suddenly be changed. And, you know, at the same time, with, in that case, all of those that were going up equally, it was no problem. And what was kicking in the reval was in the short run, some of those were going up more than others. This time, for the most part, uh, things are coming down equally, although Jerry has identified a number of individual sales that, uh, yes. that are out of kilter, and he's been addressing them uh, particularly upon request, uh, as uh, he's had to. If I may share with the council, I didn't bring a copy with me, but this is a typical uh, computerized sale program that we run. There are about 132 sales here in, in a year's time. It was run the first week of January. And what you're seeing here is that the, the black line is the center. Uh, that's a perfect assessment right there. That's a direct hit. Uh, beyond that, they, they go in increments of 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%. This red line means that there is a 10% acceptable margin is the two red lines. So you can see that up here, the top part, uh, these could be uh, under assessments. Everything from the top red line is under assessed in this sale activity period. Everything below the red line could be claimed to be under assessed, uh, over assessed. Uh, did I say that right? Yes. Under assessed, yeah. over assessed. It's the opposite. Yeah. So we can tell from doing these on a monthly basis uh, which properties are out of whack. And uh, like Mike said, there are times when we don't go out and review those that are under assessed. Uh, we also don't go out and review those that are under assessed. But in these times, I think we'll have to do more of an effort to do both, to review those that are over as well as under. You've got more under than you have over. Now the well, the there's, you're right, there's a slight, there's a slight, uh, yes, there's a preference, a bias, I guess we call it, right? I, I think that really shows, you know, just looking at it from a distance, you can see the print on it, it really does show that it is all going about the same, you've got the same number that are going a little bit strange on the top as you are on the bottom. Yeah. From these printouts, we can also target the, uh, we can do these by neighborhood. Uh, we've been doing them individually because the last time we had a talk, we talked the neighborhood thing. Uh, doing them by neighborhoods in, in this kind of a uh, climate would be a little more difficult. I think the individual ones show up a lot more. And what we do is someone who comes in and says, well, uh, my property is, is over-assessed, we can always relate back to the printouts we had in the past and those adjustments we made in those neighborhoods, we could say, well, yeah, we've, we've had one or two in that particular area. Any other particular questions? Uh, well, just another comment because our last revaluation was done right at the peak of uh, boom. Yes. And as more and more people begin to come in to have their assessments changed uh, because of the you know drop in the market, I think it's going to get uh, unfair rather quickly because those people that do come in and, and get their <laughs> Valuation change. We'll, we'll, we'll feel very good. But all those that don't, that sit back there and don't realize that this change is taking place, while there's the opportunity to do it, I think are going to lose out. And that's why it's the town's responsibility, not not the individuals, when they get to that point to do something. But actually, the reval was done about 10 months to a year before the peak of the boom. Well, I know. And if you, look, I mean, you couldn't get much closer. <laughs> no. As I look at, you know, my own property, Jerry valued it at $100,000. Uh, 
it went up to 120 and now it's probably back close to 100 and I think you know it was very clear that there was that peak after the last rebound and you know the, I know those of you around the table might be able to say not my property you know that, that's something we're dealing with but uh, for the most part people right now values are probably fairly close to the earth their assessed values and there, there are exceptions out there but uh, for the most part they're, they're, they're headed right back to the assessed value from the last rebuild and according to real estate people out there uh, things are Things are stabilizing and deceleration because of lower interest rates. Time will tell if that really shows up in the numbers, but that's what they're all saying. Okay, any other? Questions? Jerry, I've got a question on the outlay account. Were you, was your department scheduled for anything that <coughs> it's been chosen not to request this year? No, I think uh, I, I think I was trying to replace the old online printer, but I, I didn't even bring it up this year. I brought it up last year, and, and it was it was no last year, so I didn't even consider bringing it up this year. Still as noisy as it was last It's just noisy as it was last year, and like Mike said, it, it functions, it prints. In fact, we used it to print the tax bills last week, and it's a uh, good working order. So I would say, no, there's no, we had nothing planned. Okay, thank you. Further questions of our assessor? Jerry, thank you for uh, coming in under the absolute dollars that were spent last year, both for the assessing and code enforcement uh, division. There are other further questions. Uh, you know where to find him. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Let us move on to our planning uh, division, 0125, page 63. Ms. O'Mara, please join us. I'd like to welcome Maureen. That's the first time she's had you here. I think before the council. Yes. As a whole, well, even though you are the finance committee. So, thank you. And uh, this does Maureen is our whole first, particularly for the benefit of all of those in the audience. Uh, Maureen is our first full-time planner replacing a contracted service. And in, in this instance, we saw very clearly, and I think the budget shows, is that we can do much better with the full-time staff member than we can with the, the con contracted service and be a lot more, not only at a lower cost, but also being far more responsive to the citizens. So uh, continuing that discussion this morning, uh, this is an example of a place where, uh, for once, my what I said this morning holds true. <laughs> and certainly Maureen has been working uh, regularly with the Ordnance Committee, uh, Billy and Janet and I, over the last several months, and it's just been an absolute uh, delight and change since uh, being able to be really on the cutting edge and, and having someone in-house really uh, all the time has made it a lot easier for us on the Ordnance Committee. Please let us go through the planning budget. Okay, uh, starting with 1001, that's one full-time position, uh, anticipated 5% salary adjustment. Uh, I'll just go through each line and, and if you have questions. Okay. Uh, the second one, part-time payroll. There's no part-time payroll there. Um, there are, there is a planning board secretary who comes to meetings and there is a part-time person who is not uh, working at this time. Both of those positions are taken care of through the boards and commissions line item. Um, Line 2004 is $900 for printing and advertising. Uh, that takes care of photocopies, uh, preparing uh, for the planning board agendas and other types of photocopies, uh, legal ads for public hearings, and notice to residents regarding projects in their area. Uh, one recommendation I am making is that when there are legal ads that are required uh, for a particular project, that that be billed to the applicant. That's not an unusual way to handle it. Um, there is uh, some communities that also bill for the notices to residents. I'm not suggesting that we do that at this time, but th that is a policy change from what's been done up until now. That would have to be an ordinance change, wouldn't it? I don't think it has to be an ordinance change. Right now it just says that a, a legal ad shall be posted for public hearings and the payment is not, a, is not addressed in the ordinance. Um, I would say probably on the average, a uh, typical public hearing ad uh, would run probably around $150. So with, without <coughs> this type of adjustment, 
Um, if there was an increase in development, the required public hearings, this $900 could be used up fairly quickly. Um, keeping in mind the kind of fees that people pay now, I believe it's $300 for a site plan. Um, you could argue that's a pretty good deal right now because you're, you're taking time. Uh, the planner meets with each applicant, I'd, I'd say, a number of times to explain the ordinance, how to, how to prepare a package for the planning board. An applicant usually goes before the board at least twice. Um, and there is a certain amount of preparation uh, in, in briefing the board about a particular application. So this is a, a different policy, uh, but something I think that other communities are doing, and I wouldn't consider it unreasonable. What do we require for ordinance for legal notices? For what kind of um, Your only developments that require a public hearing. Uh, major subdivisions require a public hearing. Um, site plans and minor subdivisions are public hearings at the discretion of the planning board. Uh, and from what I've seen, the planning board usually does hold a public hearing on those types of items. I would suggest that if, for example, the board ran out of time and a new public hearing had to be scheduled or a public hearing had to be um, added, uh, that that would be something that the town would take the cost of. But that initial requirement would be the responsibility of the applicant. Uh, the town would continue to place the ad. Uh, we would just make some adjustment either by uh, me placing the ad and giving the name of the applicant as who you can send the bill to, or we would receive the bill and then bill the applicant. Uh, I deal with this all the time, and Portland newspapers have a policy um, change within the past month that they require prepayment for that kind of ad unless the applicant has an account with the paper. Mm -hmm. Um, South Portland does require the applicants to pay for the legal ads. We had been having all of them billed, and apparently there were some problems. And of Portland, I believe, has the applicant pay for the legal ad. I think that's a. I don't think that's an unfair way to deal with this. It takes um, a financial burden off the town. I have encountered recently, the most recent one we had a developer put in for a zone change, and that was $225. We've seen the legal ads run two to $400. So I think it can be a significant cost to the town. It's not at all uncommon, as Maureen saying, for the developer to bear that cost. I think the other thing with, with the cost is whether you're required to put some kind of a map in with the ad, and there's nothing in our ordinance right now that requires that. Our legal ads are, are very short, usually three to four lines that just talk about the location and what's being proposed. And You went into the two to four hundred dollar ads when you were talking about double, double columns and um, maps that show the location of sites. Is this something we have to revisit to approve a policy on? Can we deal with that? I think it ought to be a regular council agenda item because it, it also indirectly impacts. I think we, we need to relook at what we're charging fees for applications because, in some instances, those fees were set to reflect this as a cost. You know, that it was kind of built into the fee, and I, I, I want to be very comfortable that the council fully understands what the total fees are and, and exactly what they cover. I think it needs to be. That sounds like a good approach. I don't want to build people twice if I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, line 2006 is uh, travel. I expect that to be used primarily for travel to and from workshops and the main association of planners <coughs> annual conference. Uh, 2007. Uh, dues and memberships. The American Planning Association is, is I consider, a very useful uh, membership. In getting that, you also get Planning Magazine, which comes out, I think it comes out every month. Um, in addition, you get a discount on um, books that you may want to order. Uh, the Maine Association of Planners is, is a group in the state of Maine, also very useful to belong to. They have an, an annual conference, plus they offer workshops and training for planners. Uh, one of the most useful things about them is that they keep a very close watch on what's going on in the state legislature and brief planners about new legislation and also they have a legislative committee which lobbies on behalf of a planner's perspective on what you want to see uh, passed for legislation. Um, so those are the, the two that are proposed here. 2009, um, 
conferences and meetings. Again, the Maine Association of Planners does have an annual conference. Uh, that's $55. In addition, uh, various meet, various workshops or planners that may come up uh, during the year, I think that would probably offer three to four workshops for me to attend. Um, in addition, there's a budget in here for one workshop for each of the planning board members. Uh, one of the major goals of the planning board this year has been education of the planning board. In, in the last couple of years, there's been a, a significant turnover uh, on the planning board. Uh, each of the members brings a lot of expertise, but at the same time, they feel that they would like to get to know a lot more about uh, planning in particular. And so this, this would offer each of those members an opportunity to attend uh, at least one workshop. Uh, a couple of meetings of, ago of COG, there was talk about the possibility of having uh, one of the COG planners come to a community and do a, a, a workshop for an entire mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's happened. I haven't heard any more about that, but I, I think that's still Probably could be done. I mean, if the entire planning board is really interested in uh, training and education, that might be a possibility. Mm -hmm. The other thing they've done is we we haven't scheduled a date yet, but they want an orientation session, and um, that would be directed towards new planning board members. But so many of the board members have been on mm -hmm. for such a short time that they have all expressed an interest in and just going over our own ordinances and getting a sense of what a planning board member does and what they should focus in on when they get a package at the end of the week. Uh, so that's something I, I suspect we'll be doing either in March or April. The next line, uh, 2010, is um, professional services. Uh, this originally was the uh, part-time planner position uh, plus engineering services and legal services. It's been reduced um, primarily because there's no part-time planning anymore. Uh, the engineering services are still in here. Uh, I would emphasize they're still very important. Uh, we use our engineer to review all plans that come before the board, um, and he makes sure that they're in compliance with uh, the ordinances you have now. This is, this is one of those costs where either you spend the money now or you probably spend a lot more money later. Uh, secondly, I, I have proposed an additional $900 in here um, in anticipation of any costs that the town might have to incur in working on the, any amendments to the wetlands ordinance. Uh, any wetland technical services that the board would need in reviewing projects would be paid by the applicant by setting up an escrow account. And again, the legal fees that were originally in here have been moved to a consolidated account for the town. So those what are more. Legal fees, um, I was estimating at about $10,000. And that's, that's assuming we're not doing anything out of the ordinary. That would be your typical um, issues that would arise when you're reviewing a project, uh, whether something needs subdivision review or not, and also um, ordinance review. And I, I anticipate the planning board will be looking at a lot of ordinances this year. What I try to do is to move all the legal fees into one area so we can better keep track of them. But you will have some statements so we know where most of our expenses are being incurred. I, I won't be preparing them all the time, but what Tom does, the, the town attorney, is he sends bills that he divides them up. So, you know, with the, the, the expense distribution would show it, but I wouldn't specifically prepare a report on it unless it was requested to do so. But that $10,000 was part of this 60 last year. It was part of this. Actually, last year I think it was eight. Uh, 3006 is miscellaneous supplies, paper, pencils, um, copies of zoning maps. Uh, the $300 is um, reserved for purchase of books and periodicals. Um, the American Planning Association has an additional fee that you can pay and you get updated planning reports, uh, which can be very useful. Uh, we've used some of those, I think, for different issues that the Ordinance Committee has come upon. Uh, also. I think that this amount will be expended based on the kind of projects that the town wants to work on. For example, the town wants to work on a town center plan. There are several books that are available through uh, planning advisory service that we could order, and that's what this money would be used for. Uh, and under outlay, there are no requests for this year. So if you have any questions. 
Maureen, is it, uh, is it financially feasible in the, in the sense of how often uh, law and ordinances change uh, to establish a planning library? I mean, in terms of the, uh, you know, I guess books versus periodicals. Periodicals seem to be on the cutting edge by the time you get a book, unless it's a Boca code or something, it's almost already out of date. Um, because we've, we've looked at this issue when we've had the, you know, for the consulting town planner last three years, this whole idea about building and establishing a library, planning library. I would focus uh, most closely on periodicals because that, that is where you get more up-to-date information. There is, every once in a while, however, a book that seems to be the definitive source on the particular issue you're working on. So I, I haven't, I mean, I've never, there's only a couple books I can think of. Um, but I can think of books that have been worked on by people that are pretty much the compilation of the last 15 articles they wrote that are the definitive information on groundwater um, and how to write a groundwater ordinance and those are pretty new and they have five different model ordinances in the back of the book and that's, that's something that I would consider a good resource if that was a primary um, issue for the town. Uh, again, for the town center, uh, I usually I'm pretty good at scrounging books and uh, borrowing from other people, but you do on occasion find one that, that really is very useful, but I would focus most heavily on periodicals. I hope before we go too far on the town center concept that we as a whole town council get a chance to have some discussion and we need to public before we really start drafting. I've, I've said the same thing to the town manager. Um, I'm concerned about moving ahead with uh, particular major planning projects without a consensus from the town that this is a priority at this time. Yeah. We had some information from the manager a good while ago about a service that the town is subscribing to where we, it's similar to PAS. Yeah. Where is that, what account is that service on? comes out of the Office Supply Account of Administration. And do you know how much that is? In About 350 So that's comparable, and that's even more perhaps than the PMS cost. I'm just, have we used that at all? The MIS one? M is it MIS? Yeah. For ordinance language? We, we, we tried once. To do it for the sign ordinance? No, it wasn't. It was, it was, it was No, it wasn't. It was, we get yeah. One thing was a really yeah. obscure, obscure issue, and they didn't have anything, but, uh, are you using the PIS for other? Yes, we are. Because <coughs> I know PAS is very good about sending the information. You said at one point we could get that information through COG, but it took about a month. I, I followed that up. That was, um, they lost, the, the PAS mailed it out and it got lost and they're mailing it out again. But PAS is uh, a research service that's provided through the American Planning Association. It's an additional subscription fee. Um, the COG planning department has the PAS, so I've already called them probably about five different times, and part of your, your dues to COG is paying for this free service, which otherwise the town would have to pay for. So if I need something and I think they may have it available, I, I call COG and they place the request for us. So you're getting that in a normal turnaround with the PAS. Yeah. I was concerned about the turnaround too. I think that's another benefit of belonging to COG, certainly, because that's over. $250, dollars a year belonging to that individual. For example, I'll call MIS Monday and ask for contracting our snow plowing services. <laughs> <laughs> what they have for information. You'll have that sent to council to do Save me a lot of time. Well, you can go totally and save your money. Other I just wanted to know what PAS was, but I think I figured it out. Planning advisory service. I have another one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Maureen, thank you very much. Thank you. Your, your input. Thank you. Why don't we jump to, uh, I see Mr. Rallis has been patiently uh, watching his watch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Account 0510, page. What page number? Well, 188 it should be, roughly. We missed a page. You know I gave a list of the library account number on that sheet yet? No, you didn't. And the elections account number? Oh, I'm sorry. We'll get it.
Thank you. I feel I should be taking an old field. You look like a congressional investigating committee here. Again, I'd like to emphasize that George was extremely cooperative in, in meeting the budget targets. As you, as you'll note, the entire library budget of 210000 comes out with an increase of $483. Uh, because it's so personnel intensive, it, it's not an area that I looked to for, for actual reductions. It was one that I looked to. I looked to the library account to try and keep it uh, steady. We did look at a number of areas internally of maybe closing the library early, maybe not having it open Saturday afternoon anymore. I took the position, the very small amount we would say it's kind of a stupid thing to do. And in my opinion, uh, with, with the great investment that we have in facilities and in books, and they ought to be kept accessible. So uh, we, we tried to avoid those cuts that would get people all excited and, and upset, particularly when they weren't things that saved a whole lot of money. But we did look at those things and this budget essentially keeps the same hours. The That's increase, the by the way, is yeah. 0.0023%. So he <laughs> <laughs> tried, tried to cut cost. Um, I'd like to thank Joy for his, all the help in getting to this point. Okay, let's start with the full-time payroll. There's no great change here except for the 5% uh, increase the suggested 5% increase from last year. I got a question. Yeah. Yeah. The difference in the children's librarian and the rest of them is yeah, that was quite a difference. Is there that much difference in responsibilities? Okay. Yeah, she's essentially runs the whole children's end of the library uh, as over George's direction, but she picks out all the children's library books and all that. But the, the reason I started answering that question instead of George is because I assume you, you might have asked the question because of the cross out. Mm -hmm. And what it is is I had given the instructions to the department heads, 5% period. Uh, everyone else understood that, that everything was to increase 5%, but if there were people who would do it up in steps, that you know we weren't doing away with the step plan. Uh, in this case, this particular individual was someone who has not reached the top of the pay plan and she is due for a step increase. Also, I'd like to add that Louise uh, Sullivan has been uh, has done a great job with the computer program. I mean, if it weren't for Louise Sullivan, <laughs> we would not have a computer program. <laughs> and she did a, did a wonderful job, so I'd really like to commend her on all her efforts. The no, no, I know you're not. <laughs> I just wanted to I say that. Because I know how George feels about computers. <laughs> <laughs> She took me from a bookie to a, a computer. Well, I'm not yet. <laughs> I'm still working on that. Still learning. That's quite a statement for a librarian a bookie. <laughs> uh, the second, uh, of, of 510-1002, part-time payroll. Again, no great change there. Uh, includes 5% increase, no change in hours. Uh, the computer project, I hope to see the, the, the tunnel at the end of the light by uh, <laughs> next June. I think we should be be begin to see the end of it all. But after that, I don't know what's going to happen. But uh, I think another year would be getting toward the end. So and the major, I, major project to get the whole card catalog. Yes. And you, if you're in the library, in the adult section, you hear someone coming over who's only been dealing primarily with children's section. What's the matter with you over here? <laughs> People like the computerized. Yes, I believe so. I think it uh, makes things more efficient, yeah. and I think people are very pleased. Yeah. I've heard good comments. Um, next, telephone, no change from last year's budget. Power, a slight increase, and this is due primarily uh, to the energy demands of the computer system. Uh, <laughs> No, hold on. <laughs> um, a slight, a slight increase. Uh, I've talked to a uh, uh, CMP, and they, they said that by the end of this year, this fiscal year, we'll have a better handle on just how much more uh, the computer will demand, because it fluctuates. Don't you think some of it, Joy, is also the fact that that temperature, humidity, System down the store. Yes, and yes, yes. That, that's a real, I see that. that, that the really computers don't use that much. That, yeah. that piece of equipment wasn't working part of last year, and now it is. And it, it runs it all the time. Yeah. 
And the lips work now, too. Yes. Well, rarely. That works, too. So <laughs> it works. Uh, Give you an example. The past month, the electric bill for the library was $807. Yeah, 788, that's fine. 709, 760, 738, 700. And then it was 456 back during the summer. So. That's high. Water and sewer, no change. Uh, postage, uh, even with the new postal rates, uh, no change. We may have to mail out fewer overdue notices, but uh, it, it's the same as last year. Conferences and meetings, a uh, slight decrease. Uh, what will happen there that we may attend fewer workshops, fewer conferences, but uh, I think it will still won't, uh, I think we'll still be in good shape. Programs, a uh, slight decrease from 900 to 700 dollars. Uh, 510 2035, building repair and maintenance. The major change there is the oil tank replacement. And DEP, the deadline uh, is October 1992. Mike and I talked about that. We thought that it was important to do it this year. What tank is that? By the old library. By the old one? Yeah. Okay. It's an old one. We really, really. really We're not too sure either if if it is in good shape. So, uh, you know, it's there are that we can regularly test this when we can. So, we, we would prefer to be cautious and take care of it. That'll be contracted out. It'll be, uh, yeah. Oil tank should be very careful because you, you, you hit it wrong and think can That's be gas history. Yeah. That's gasoline. Just gas? Yeah. 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 So be careful. Please be careful. The next is, is my favorite, the contingency fund, and I guess it was so contingent this year that I forgot to put in the, the uh, name of the title in the, uh, this is, uh, there's a slight decrease here, and this is used mostly for gifts from volunteers. Do you have an update with the hundred dollars, George? I can, it could be better, but I think we'll do with it, you know, we can. How many volunteers do you have? Uh, offhand. 10, 10, 11. If you run a little short during the year, let me know. And I'll I certainly know. will. If you need more donuts or pie. So you can come back to the tape. You'll get a phone call. Uh, the next is uh, Miscellaneous Contract Services, a great name for book bindery. What we do with this is we, we bind books. And there's a slight decrease there. That is contracted. This is contracted. <laughs> it's been a running joke. This is going to be. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Through the day here. Uh, next, office supplies, no change. Next, 510-3003, heat. Uh, this includes the, the suggested 90 cent per gallon rate. <laughs> Next, 510-3006, miscellaneous supplies. Slight decrease, and this is used primarily for uh, children's programs. The next, 510-3020, books and periodicals. This remains the same, even though there's, there's a, you know, an average 6.5% increase in books and magazines each year. But uh, we can do with this. Next, 510-3022, audiovisual. As you can see, a great decrease. But we'll have to hold off buying uh, book cassettes and records for next year. Um, we do at times receive gifts, book cassettes, records. But we'll hold off this year and see what happens next year. But it'll be no great loss of the collection anyway. I think we built a, we're building a good audio cassette collection of books on tape. Did you get any as a result of the Cape Corridor mentioning it? Before? Not yet. Not yet. I think it was in the, uh, Two weeks ago. yesterday. Okay. A wish list. 
if you might actually, perhaps Mr. Ellis, uh, at some point, if there isn't a great response, even a, even a specific article, I mean, it's just so often that a person will buy a book on a cassette, listen to it in the car going back and forth, and just throw it up into the shelf somewhere, that uh, things like that, I know, are you know, real additions to the, uh, to the library, and even a special article about that kind of donation. Okay, You'd be yeah. surprised at the end. I could include that in my wish list then, uh, audio cassette books. Yeah. And the next outlay, a big decrease. Mm -hmm. uh, again, this was used primarily last year for computer supplies, furnishings, and I think we have bought most of our computer supplies for, uh, for the time being. And there was no great item that we had to have this year or the next, the next fiscal year. Window repairs are on there. Coming fiscal year, do you have um, maintenance? Mm -hmm. That was on uh, last year year's anyway. maintenance budget, okay. but we had to to leave that for the all tank replacement. <laughs> and try to do that next year. Okay. Is there anything? One concern I would have over there is the carpeting on the stairs. Is that when's that due to be replaced? That's been. Uh, that's been mended recently, the, the, yeah. to the adult section. Yes. That was mended recently, but you're right, it needs... Uh, That's going to be a liability. Um, you know, it can't be that much to replace it, so if you find some extra money, it would be perhaps... One I mean, the stairs lead to the adult... Uh, yeah. And uh, that's it. Not a very complex budget. Fellow counselors, any... Uh, Clarifications or questions for our head librarian? Just thank you for coming in. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yes. Nice seeing you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Perhaps as long as we're in the uh, reviewing the salary issues, those kind of accounts, maybe we'll just go to, go to town hall and finish up there and then we can perhaps end up with revenues. Go to 610 is what you suggest. Well actually I'm going to go back to 110. 110. 110, 610, 690, 660 and other revenues. Okay. Unless there's a other approach. Uh, 110 is the administration account. It's down 15% from last year. Uh, it provides for a 5% increase for all employees, page 49. It uh, proposes that all part-time replacement vacation personnel be eliminated. That's basically when my secretary was out, I had a replacement. And it, it, it's a real, it really is tough to be in there without someone. But, you know, as I use my PC more with the help of the other people in the office, I'll be able to get by, but uh, it, it really does help to have someone that can get into a budget pack. Telephone. Wait, oh. How many days or weeks of vacation are we talking about? Two weeks. Three weeks. And that's, so that's viable. The <coughs> thing is, you know, it creates a burden. I, I dump yeah. stuff on the Denver, I dump stuff across the hall. Uh, I do a lot of it myself. And, but with it, it's the phone and the. It, actually, it, I hate to sound this so it doesn't come out right, but one of the biggest problems is when I'm meeting with people and others come crashing through the door and they, they don't understand that I'm meeting with someone. And it's nice to have someone there to avoid that problem. But anyway, it's put a sign on the door. It, yeah, I don't like to meeting in session. Yeah, but you shouldn't. You know, people, you shouldn't have to do that. But anyway, I'm proposing we do away it's pretty with it. <laughs> you would think so. You would think so. Perhaps Buster could come. Buster maybe. <laughs> the telephone. Uh, I'd like to apologize to everyone who tried to call this week. I realized five two five one was quite busy and. That's because you, almost all of you called. Uh, <laughs> oh, but we couldn't get through to make it busy. No, we're we continuing to look at the phone system. Unfortunately, we've reached capacity with the current phone sets. And at some point, we're going to need to replace them and uh, to upgrade our phone system. Can you bring your cellular phone inside? <laughs> not at 75 cents a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, printing and advertising, the, the, the cut here is the town report. Uh, two things, propose, three things, proposing to change the color picture black back to black and white. Uh, going to make the typeset smaller. If you look at if you look at this town report, 
and you know we really don't need typeset quite that large. Wait yep. a minute, the population um, is aging. Are aging. This is still very large. The <laughs> final thing is you look at some of these reports, and I, I don't mean they're to really criticize aging. my department heads, but they're rather long-winded. And uh, you may, you give have them a give them a, a number. Exactly. One you know, page. Not to pick on the chief of police, but you know, <laughs> his stats here. This whole page, this whole page, to this point, you know, we ought to be able to get the police report on one page, and that's that's what the cut is in the town report. I'll just get it cut out the grass and some of the pictures. Yeah, we're well, going. We're going to have to, but that, that's what that budget says. The bottom line, postage uh, has gone up, and we couldn't absorb the increase in, in this account because this is. For, for the most part, with the exception of the library, I think this covers all of the postage and all the different accounts the police bring over their mail and the big edits and tax bills, uh, and notices, et cetera. Travel uh, is the reimbursement uh, to the manager and to others. What others? Everyone who, who goes, uh, the clerk. <laughs> <laughs> if if uh, Barbara goes to some meeting somewhere, uh, it's all at 24 cents per month. 24 cents per mile. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> there are advantages to being here. So this uh, is everybody up there. Every Yes, everyone in the front of the Capitol. Dues and memberships includes the uh, ICMA for the manager, which is the International City Management Association, the Maine Town City Management Association, the Maine Town City Clerks Association, the New, New England Clerks, Association and the General Assistance Administrators Association for, for Barbara Ray. The, the, the most expensive there is the City Manager's Association. That's about $400 currently. Conferences and meetings, uh, similar to the, the other departments, uh, the manager's attendance at National ICMA conference is reduced. However, I will be attending that. Uh, because I'm the president of the state association, or I will be by then the president of the state association of managers, and they will pick up the expense, at least, you know, part of the expense of my being it. In addition, every year we have all the conference registration fee has always been paid in the previous fiscal year, and that would still be done during this fiscal year with the budget for this fiscal year. But beyond that, the association will pay for my attendance, and I will go very But therefore, we're not prepaying. The, the following year, year and we will, we'd have to address that in the next year's budget if we choose. What, do you know the, that amount? The registration amount? It's uh, about $300. The, this also includes uh, the, the manager's meetings in Maine, the clerk, this clerk's meetings, the MMA convention for those who go. The, the major point here that I should mention is the clerk has been going to the New England Clerks Institute down in Newport, Rhode Island. It's a three-year program. This is the third year of the three-year program. I felt very strongly after two years had been, been invested that we ought to continue to, uh, to fund it. Our professional services is for special studies, still at 4,000, and the registry of deeds at, at 3,000. There's different things that come up during the year that need funding, and that's what special studies are for. I really can tell you at this point what they might be. We're looking ahead of the uh, office equipment is about the same. Office supplies is, is down. We're going to try to uh, economize and scrimp and uh, do with less. And there's no proposed outlet. What did you anticipate in that one? Actually, it wasn't that much this year. With the replacement typewriter, uh, we had hoped to do more with records preservation, particularly. Town Council Index. Town Council Indexing of the records. Yeah, yeah. So that you know when we when you ask about <laughs> how much was allocated to it for road improvements, we can quickly look at the index and find it, and that was going to be computerized. So pretty fast as you look at all of the miscellaneous outlay accounts throughout the whole budget, unless it's an environmental mandate or it's or it's a it's a real safety thing, uh, for the most part it's all been limited. The stick to the town council thing? Sure. Uh, this provides on uh, page 68 
uh, the salaries of the town council members, $350 a year uh, per council member. Uh, the printing and advertising account, uh, dues and membership, which is the dues in the National League of Cities uh, Association at $700. Uh, conferences and meetings, $1,000 for the MMA conferences expenses, such as the minor expenses we have for today. If any of you go to, to different meetings so that we pay a registration fee, it comes out of this. There's also uh, a 50% reduction in, in the other meetings that the council has generally attended uh, of the National League of Cities. Can we go back to uh, dues and membership? Yeah. What was the big reduction from 40 to 100 to 700? This past year, one of the council members served on the steering committee, one of the steering committees of uh, the NLC, and that was agreed last year to be uh, funded this year. The, the plan is, is that there, there was a total amount set aside for that membership, that any amount remaining on June 30 that was allocated for that purpose would be continued for service on that committee until it is gone. And there would be no additional funding in this budget. You ready for professional services? Uh, this includes the audit. Uh, there's a, what, uh, yeah. The conferences and meetings, the money that's remain if they yes. reduced by half. Yeah. What does that mean? How many people can go to the National League of I, you know, it's everything we've been looking at it. These conferences are generally, the na national conferences are $1,000 to $1,500. Mm -hmm. So you're going down to two to three. Two people, what we've been sending Total. for. You've been sending uh, two and a two half. To Washington. Two You've been two sending two and a half to me. Either one or the other. Four counselors total. Right. Four counselor like trips and one manager trip. Two Yeah, we ended up with two are going to Washington. Only oh, two were last year. Three. No, they were. Three last year. In the end, it came out. This during this year, although because actually. It, it was three plus two. Yeah, it came out two and a half. Came out right. I think it's difficult to send one person to a conference from the community, mm. especially a conference this large. <coughs> the uh, there is a December meeting of the National League of Cities as well as the March meeting, mid December and the first week of March. There's two meetings. I know that, but <coughs> thinking maybe one year we have to send people to the National Conference and one, and one year to the Washington or something like that. I, know, it makes, I think it is a very awkward position to put somebody in to go to that by themselves. Mm -hmm. and with but you're saying keep the amount of money we have now, only alternate which meetings we go to instead of covering both meetings a year, yeah. you're saying alternate them. Or well, maybe send the manager to Washington. <laughs> I mean, somebody should. The Washington one may not Washington. be as difficult to go to by by oneself as the larger one. I yeah, know, I haven't and, gone to Washington. And the Washington one often ends up being very important if we want to have a chance to meet with our congressional yeah. delegation. That's one of the few opportunities. It's we've the had. only opportunity, really. I mean. Uh, <coughs> Already this time on an issue of very, very much importance. Uh -huh. the, we've got appointments scheduled with Senator Cohen and with Congressman Andrews, and uh, we, <coughs> we expect one as well with Mitchell's office. And it, it would be something that could bring a, a significant return to the community. Does it make sense to have two go to the December meeting and one to the, and one to the Washington? No, I think it's more important to have two in Washington and so on than, than the other one in December. And then I've got another problem here because we're saying, yeah. what are we doing about department yeah. heads right. on state travel? How consistent are we going to be? Well, that's let, what I'm saying. let me explain what's going to happen on this particular account because I was the person uh, on the Human Development Steering right. Committee. I have been paying all my per diem food and everything when I've gone to the Human Development meetings, the special meetings that have been held, I will have enough money without any more allocations in the 1992 fiscal budget to attend my last two meetings that doesn't have anything to do with that 
3,000. So what we're basically saying is that with that money as a holdover, I would be able to attend the last meeting of my two-year commitment to the Human Development Steering Committee, which would be this December's meeting, with another counselor. Okay. And two counselors would be able to attend the congressional meeting in March of 92. Okay. But only because, only because, 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 of, because of this But for this particular budget, that's how that would flush out, basically. So we're going to have two counselors in Washington. That's right, but we're going to face uh, a new problem at this time next year. I understand that. Uh, which we can deal with. Yeah. Uh, going to face this problem like you do all your other funding decisions. Okay. Yeah. Professional services. Three more one. The audit, uh, Debbie is coordinating the process of obtaining uh, of new proposals from auditors in this committee, subcommittee meeting Monday night to review proposals and to decide who they want to interview. So that costs. You know, we'll know better once that process is done. Uh, miscellaneous here is for all of the, the plaques that the council gives if you send flowers somewhere, all of the different things that come up during the year. Uh, Memorial Day is for all the flags that go on graves that are paid for by the town, as well as the PA system and a couple of other odds and ends. Are we having parade this year? I, I spoke to uh, the parade chairman yesterday, and he's very excited about it, and he was going to give the war veterans Chairman, a call uh, to uh, coordinate the dedication of the uh, new memorial. Yeah, and these funds, of course, are from Memorial Day 1992, not from Memorial Day okay. 1991. And we'll be asked to uh, march again? Yes, yeah, the council will be asked to march. Legal fees, there's uh, a total budget of $45,000. And as you can see, I, I was thinking 40, and then I added the 10 back in from the, the planning. So it was all in one place, and then one of my last minute budget cuts was, well, let's pray again that uh, we don't get sued as much and don't have as much legal work. So I ended up with 45. Yeah, but most of the work is done. On, I mean, we, with not a whole lot of applications coming in, we're not leaving ourselves. Not with, with, yeah, we're not leaving ourselves <laughs> such advantage of development. <laughs> The council contingency account. The council contingency account remains at eight thousand. The goals implementation count is uh, five thousand. Well, well, yeah. yeah. Well, I know you like this barrel right through here. In the well, stop. The council contingency for this year. Are we in? We're still anticipating spending the entire amount, as far as you can tell. I. You know, we still have a few months left, and uh, I don't know. How much have we spent?